Welcome to Show and Tell. In this series, I review brand new games quickly and with as much detail as possible. Ready? Go. Turnover is a stealth game, and a hardcore one at that. It takes a top-down, Hotline Miami-esque approach, and rather boldly, the game actually lets you straight up see the detection range for pretty much all of your enemies. In many ways, it harkens back to old, challenging stealth games, which has become somewhat of a lost genre, as it feels like you can be stealthy in almost any game now. And many of the games which originally had stealth at their core, like Splinter Cell and Thief, have become closer and closer to action games. That's what really intrigued me about the game, so I requested a pre-release review copy, here are some thoughts from a guy who has never really been into hardcore stealth games. While there isn't really anything new when it comes to the art style, it's a unique blend of Pixels and Hotline Miami. It doesn't take any of the wackiness from Hotline Miami, but it gives the game its own kind of dark feel, and a large part of that is due to the atmosphere and the context of what's explained about the world and the cutscene you get when booting up the game. Or at the very least, I think that's where the game's at its strongest, when it embraces its kind of brutally depressing tone. The choir music that comes in when the guards have been alerted to your presence and are looking for you I thought was really inspired. I just felt that the tone shifted in the latter half of the game and found itself being a little more generic, which I'll talk about a bit more in the story section. The mechanics are certainly good. This isn't an easy game and you're given a ton of different items and objects in the environment which allow for a lot of freedom. That said, there's almost always an optimal way of playing, which there's nothing wrong with, but just know that this isn't really a game about multiple paths or ways of doing things. It's about finding the right way of doing things. Like a stealth game should, each level is presented as a puzzle. The camera pans over to the exit and objectives to show you where you need to go, and then lets you roam free to figure things out. It starts simple, you just need to find your way to the exit in the early levels, but the longer the game goes on, the more enemies you need to avoid, and the more objectives you need to complete to create a path to the exit. There are also optional objectives within certain missions that can grant you perks, and I have to praise the game for allowing these perks to be missed entirely. If you fail to complete the objective for a perk on a level, you cannot replay the level to get to it. You have to start a new game and get it the next time. It's just a shame that the perks are not all that useful. The bonuses you get are really minor, like a very slight delayed reaction from enemies, and in the end, I don't know that they really saved my life even once. Despite the praise I'm giving it, the game has a pretty major flaw, in my opinion, and that's unpredictability. One in every ten times you're making your way through a level, you'll die and it won't be your fault. Whether it's a companion running into gunfire and therefore failing the level, or an enemy seeing you for seemingly no reason, there's something every now and again which will really piss you off. It's fine in a game like Hotline Miami, which has short levels and checkpoints, but many of the levels in this game are very, very long, and to have a good five minutes of work go down the drain because of some derpiness in the game really tries the player's patience. It's not a universal negative because I know that there are some very patient people out there who can deal with this stuff, but if you have a relatively short fuse for frustration like me, and I'm betting most people, then this is going to be an issue for you. I was a big fan of the story at the beginning of the game. It's set in the very near future in a kind of dystopian US. I say kind of because without getting too political, it's basically a very corrupt US, and a lot of people would argue that the US right now is corrupt, but maybe just not hugely corrupt like in this version of the US. But without getting too hung up in the details, you're playing as a woman who has simply been caught in a corporate feud, and has found herself needing to sneak past men with guns in order to survive. I'm really compelled by that idea, it's kind of what fueled the creation of another game called This War of Mine, where the focus is on the real victims of war, rather than glorifying one side as the heroes and another as the villains. The only heroes in This War of Mine are the people that do what it takes to survive, and that's how I originally viewed the story of this game. Unfortunately, as the game goes on, she becomes more and more like a Bruce Willis character. She acquires more ways of killing enemies like grenades, and the story at one point becomes about saving other people rather than saving herself. Maybe I'm selfish, but that was a lot less relatable to me. I think they missed an opportunity here, and I, I wonder now what the point of the world building was. Why couldn't it have been an office building in 2015 being threatened by terrorists if the main character was going to take it upon themselves to be a hero? What was the point of making the bad guys corrupt businessmen and politicians and setting up the world as one full of bought privatized policemen? Was it just an explanation for why the cops didn't show up to help? The things that were interesting about the story to me 
just amounted to nothing. Kind of disappointing. It sucks to end on a negative note because I am recommending this game and it's mostly down to the price to content ratio. The main story is 10 to 15 hours long, though that can certainly be completed faster if you have a mind for stealth, and it's only $9.99 on Steam with a discount on launch. It's very, very hard for me not to recommend the game because its gameplay coming from a non-stealth fan was satisfying and rewarding definitely worth the price tag. Thank you very much for watching. If you're always looking for new, fun indie games to play, I regularly take it upon myself to review the ones that seem interesting, so consider subscribing. See ya.